Hi guys and happy Tuesday. Um, I hope everyone had a good week and I hope you guys listened to my podcast last week about how to have a um, make and happiness makeover. And um, I gave you tips and a lot of you have said you read it or listened to it and you're doing those tips, which is amazing. Just tag me um, so I can just share it with other people because that's why I'm here. So this week I wanted to talk about, um, just tell you guys kind of the story how yoga changed my life. Okay. And, um, I did not step into my first yoga class till I was 31 years old. I never, I thought yoga was for like the boring people. I thought they just kind of laid on their mat all day and you know, no one was strong and I was just completely wrong. Um, the yoga practice woke me up. I lived a complacent life before yoga. I was not in tune with my breath or my body. And this, I did yoga, the first class I took was, I had my two-year-old son and my three-month-old baby. And I um, was a stay-at-home mom. I had just quit teaching school. And I was like, oh, I can do this. I've always wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. I babysit all the time, I can do this. And it was the hardest job ever, ever, ever. So I was like, okay, I gotta do something. So no one told me about classes. I was gonna go to Lifetime Fitness and I was gonna go to an aerobics class because that's all I knew. And the aerobics class was full. So I had my two month old, my three month, or my two year old, three month old, and um, they were like, just try yoga. So I went to a hot, heated yoga room, put my kids in childcare, and it was like a six, or it was a 75 minute class. Um, two times during that, the childcare attendant had to come and get me because my child, either the baby was crying or they needed to be breastfed or something. But I still got this crazy experience from it. Um, I went in on my mat and thought everyone was like the abs they were doing and they were doing handstands and plank holds. I mean, I couldn't do any of it. And I remember thinking they are crazy. But um, I found out quickly that it was a challenge that I absolutely wanted to do. Um, I cried, I sweat, I got my heart rate up. I was really sore the next day. Um, and I, I remember finding myself getting frustrated at people in the class or at myself because everyone else was like so much stronger than me. And I was like, uh, -uh this was not how it was. You know, I did not think this was yoga. So, um, at the end is the best part of yoga. So if you do yoga, it's called Shavasana and it is about, you're supposed to do it about five minutes. Um, it could be three to five minutes, but literally it is where your body just relaxes on the mat, the mat holds you up and you just let everything go. And when I say let everything go, a lot of people, including myself, they cry because it's like your emotions are released and you're just now feeling how your body feels. And it's totally normal. I mean, I see it daily, all the time. And I did it too. Um, and it affected me. The whole class was like a, it was like a, um, tornado in my brain. It, it happened really quick and then it was over and then the lady came over and massaged me and I'm like, what is this? And I said, sign me up. So literally right after my first class, I went up to the teacher. I'm still friends with her. Um, she has a studio out in Flower Mound and I said, whatever you're doing, I want to do it. So I signed up for my first yoga teacher training two weeks after my first class. And in yoga teacher training is intense. It's not like your um, normal certification in fitness. It is, which is like a weekend. This is 10 weekends. Um, it's 200 hours of full on. You're doing group sessions. You're, it's not so much physical, which is what everyone thinks. They're like, oh, I'm gonna get in the best shape. And you do get in good shape, but it was not about that for me. It was like so much more mental. Um, that's why I say it. I found clarity in my life. Um, it just, I, feel like I was like real foggy, like with my life and just kind of went with emotions. And this made me really feel my body and feel my breath. Um, it gave me confidence. It gave me happiness and security within myself to, to take my life to the next level. I started taking things in my own hands and started to create a better life for myself. And it happened over time. So I remember I went in August to teacher training and then you're there every weekend for 10 weekends in a row. And mind you, I had a three month old and a two year old. So daddy would travel Monday through Friday and then he would be at home with the kids. So, I mean, it was a lot of work on both ends, but I just knew I had to do it. And then um, 
within, before I even graduated, on, after the 10th weekend, I um, started teaching. I went to 24-hour fitness and told them I was in training, started teaching, and by the end of teacher training, I was teaching 14 hours a week at like six different locations, dragging my kiddos with me everywhere. Because I, I mean, that is not what I suggest anyone do, but it taught me, it is how you get your name out there. And so I, I get to now teach yoga teachers um, that I do the 200 hour training with them. And I always say like, if you want your name, if this, if you want this to be your thing, get yourself out there and like do the stuff no one wants to do. I was doing night classes with kids. I was doing weekend classes with kids. I mean, none of it is what, you know, is not conducive at all for my lifestyle, but I just knew I had like a bigger picture in mind. So I just kept pushing myself. And I did that for four years until I made myself go to one studio and ta teach there every day. So um, in the training, it is where, so you have to read like eight books. I never had read a book. I didn't even really care to read. Um, and they're all self-help books, and which are the ones that like I tell people to read all the time now. Um, and it just really changed my mindset. It made me more aware. So in yoga, you're taught one breath, one move. So anytime I teach, I'm like, if you're going to come all the way up and stand up, you have to inhale. And then if you go down and touch your toes, you have to exhale. So that is just intentional moving the body and intentional breath work. And that carries on the rest of your life. Like the rest of your day, you should be intentionally making decisions. It makes your decisions more clear. Um, I mean, it did a lot for me. And for sure, confidence, because if you can do one hour of power yoga, true power yoga, it's crazy hard and you can do anything. So, um, and now it's, it's how my definition of coming full circle is I get to teach um, the teacher training that changed my life. I remember going through it and being like, oh my God, I have to share this with everyone. Like I want everyone to love yoga like I do. And I want everyone to change and think about how I think about things now and just changes you. Um, and that's coming full circle. So I get to do that with my um, instructors and that is pretty cool. I will say the best tip I give them is not everyone goes through yoga training, right? So like you can go to the, you know, supermarket and be in line and someone's, you know, out of her mind, just not in a healthy place, like just bitching the whole time about something. So they obviously need yoga teacher training. <laughs> so um, they're not in control, right? So you just kind of have to, it, it teaches you how to kind of deal with um, people that are already in your life, you know, and you want to help them and they can only see by your actions is how maybe they will want to change. So, um, and the number one book that we kind of base our training on, and I have it here, it's called The Four Agreements. Um, anyone can read this. It's not a yoga book. It is just four principles of how to live your life. And I feel like everyone should have it, so I'm going to go over all, um, I'm going to identify all four principles, and I'm going to kind of go in depth on them. And this book really will change your life if you let it, um, if you read it, if you underline it. And it's not going to happen overnight, but it will get to you. It will get you to where you like see the world as a bigger picture and the little things just won't matter to you. Like you'll just brush them off. If someone's rude to you, that's their problem. You know, it really will help you with that. So um, the number one to take a risk and really be alive is the biggest fear humans have. We have learned to live by other people's point of view because of fear of not being accepted and of not being good enough for someone else. Okay, so that's kind of what this whole book is about is to get out of your fear, to live in love and happiness, and you can, um, you know, do whatever you need to in the world. So number one principle is be impe impeccable with your word. When you are impeccable with your word, you take responsibility for your actions. You do not judge or you do not blame yourself. So it, the whole chapter is about gossiping, which is huge, I think, in just this world. Um, gossiping has become the main form of communication in human society. It has become the way we feel close to each other because it makes us feel better to see someone else feel as badly as we do. Like that saying, misery loves company. Consider how many times you have gossiped about the person you love the most to gain the support of others. It is spreading poison. Your opinion is nothing else than your point of view. It's not the truth. It's your, just your own beliefs, your own ego, and your own dream. That's what I think people, we lose a lot, and this book helps you. 
Um, how you can measure your impe impeccability of your word your, is your level of self-love. How much you love yourself and how you feel about yourself is a, is a directly proportionate to the quality integrity of your word. You can change your way of thinking by training your brain to only think positive. And I, I do know that from experience. It's, it doesn't happen overnight, but you know, you're, you can, you're in control of your thoughts, so you can always go positive. Use your words to share your love. It is really possible. Our brains are trained through habit. Don't let negativity into your brain. A rule to live by, if you can't say anything nice about someone, don't say anything at all, right? I wish all of us got that. The Bible says our reputation is more important than our bank account. When we make the decision not to gossip about others, we are bringing glory to God. So, you know, just to, it's, it's out of habit that we talk about other people. And believe me, I teach in a studio that, you know, we're all kind of, everyone knows each other and people are nosy and all of that. And it's just... Some, just a way to remind yourself, you know, you don't have to join in on the talking about someone. Um, so that's number one. So be impe impeccable with your word. Number two, don't take anything personally. And this is a big one I had to learn. Nothing other people do is because of you. Like the lady I said on my other podcast came up to me and was like, I don't like your music. And I'm like, okay, cool. Go to someone else's class, right? So that's on her. I like my music, so I'm not going to change it just because one person tells me she doesn't like it, you know? Um, all of us live in our own dream, in our own mind, and we are in a completely different world from the others we live in. Even when others insult you and they make it personal, it has nothing to do with you. For example, if someone says you are fat or overweight, they are dealing with their own feelings, beliefs, and opinions. That person tried to send you poison, and if you take it personally, then that poison is yours. So I think a lot of us take it personally because he said, she said, you know, and that is not our job to take that on. Um, we just have to kind of push it away and not let it enter your bubble. And we are in control of that. What this principle teaches us is whatever you think or feel is your problem, not mine. It is the way that person sees the world. It is nothing personal because you are dealing with yourself, not me. So if someone does say you're overweight um, or I get, oh, you've lost weight. And that's not a compliment to me. Like that is not a compliment. I don't want to lose weight. Um, I work hard on keeping my muscle. And um, that's, I know for a fact, that's their insecurity of them feeling overweight or something. So I just kind of be like, oh, I know. Thank you. <laughs> that's all I really say. So if you live without fear and you live with love, there is no place for any of these negative emotions. If you don't feel any of these emotions, then you will most likely feel good. When you feel good, everything around you is good. Everything makes you happy. You are loving everything around you because you are loving yourself because you like the way you are. You are content with yourself, which is a hard one to learn. You are at peace and you are happy. You will live in a state of bliss where everything is so wonderful and beautiful. And that's true. I mean, there could be chaos going around you, but if you're happy and content with yourself, then um, your world, your bubble, you know, is peaceful and, and content that the whole world could be crashing down. But in your insides, you're good. Everything is good with you because you're grounded. When you get to the, this point, it is a huge relief um, and it will become a habit. It's not going to happen overnight. If someone is treating you with love and respect, it is a gift to you or without love and respect, it is a gift to you when they walk away. And it's going to hurt really, really bad. But in the long run, it is a gift to you. Your heart will eventually heal then you can choose what you really want. You will find that you don't need to trust others as much as you trust yourself. And that's a lot I had to learn is it's your ego and you want to base out your thoughts on everyone else's opinions of you and just let all that get into your head when um, really if you, in my point of view, if you and God are okay, then it doesn't really matter about anything else, anybody else, because you are grounded. Um, the whole world can gossip about you. Your whole world can turn around or just kind of be under destruction. But really, it's like you just rise above it all is really all it is. Um, so that is number two. So, you know, don't just let 
don't the gossiping needs to stop. And um, number two is uh, don't take anything personally, which is a hard one to learn. Number three is don't make assumptions. Okay, the human mind creates a lot of chaos, which causes us to misinterpret everything and misunderstand everything. We only see we, what we want to see and hear what we want to hear. That's like perception is reality, right? We literally dream things up in our imagination, and that's the truth. Like if someone has a bad day and they tell us something, then we're like, oh my God, that's true. I am like this, da da da, da when really they were just having a fat day, <laughs> you know, and it had nothing to do with you. Uh, making assumptions in our relationships is really asking for problems, right? So we make the assumption that our partners know what we think. And so um, a good saying is, I can't read your mind, right? Like open communication is always best. So we can't assume that we can read the other person. Like they're not mad that we came home late, you know, they're just tired or something. So no more, um, uh, just you cannot read people's minds, right? There may, there is, this is where you'll, you'll find your voice and that can help you. We cannot assume that everyone in life sees the way we, life we do right? This is the biggest mistake humans make. And that is why it is hard to be ourselves around everyone because we want to just morph into what other people, what it's okay with society and how they want us to be. Real love is accepting other people the way they are and without trying to change them. If we try to change them, we really don't care about them. So don't try to change people. Let them, you know, let them be whoever they're meant to be. The way you keep yourself from making assumptions is to ask questions, keep communication clear. If you don't understand the, you know, why they're mad or what's upset, even with your friends, then just open up communication, you know. Um, with clear communication, all of your relationships will change, not only with your partner, but everyone else. That's even with kids, you know. If they had a bad day at school, they're not going to openly come out and tell you. You have to pry or get something um, out of them just so you can understand their day. Okay, so number four, last one, always do your best. No more or no less. When you do your best, you can take action. So this just is kind of sums up the, all the three principles. And the fourth one is just, um, it's not gonna happen overnight where if people are gossiping, you don't take it to heart or you don't take it emotional, right? So, but if you're more aware of it and more um, in control of your feelings, you don't, it will get easier and easier as time goes by. Um, when you do your best, you take action. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna open up a restaurant or, oh, I wanna do this for my job or, you know, I'm just doing this job so I can do it, do the other job, my real dream later. Um, and action is about living life fully. Inaction is the way we deny life. So I just hear, I just listen to people, you know, tell me what they're gonna do and, you know, most of them have no action. There's just not an action plan on it. Um, and that's like the number we have to always do our best. And that is taking action. That is actually doing something and following through with it. You can have a ton of ideas in your head, but what makes a difference is taking action on the ideas. The best way to say, I love you to God is by living your life, doing your best. The best way to thank God is by letting go of the past and living in the present moment right here, right now. When you surrender and let your past be the past, you will allow yourself to live in the moment and be alive. We were all born to live a happy life, the right to enjoy life, love our life. Don't resist life passing through you because that's God passing through you. So just kind of embrace it all, embrace the emotions, and just know it's not going to be like this forever, right? Like you're going to get through the hard stuff and probably come out better on the end. And I do think that's true. Just in my life experience, I teach classes and I've never had really anything physically wrong with me. Thank God, knock on wood, like no broken legs, no broken bones. But um, this pat, I think it's all from the CrossFit. I had slipped disc in my lower back and um, really painful. I mean, I couldn't even sit down hurt, sitting hurt, uh, standing hurt. Um, so I took a month off of fitness. Like I still taught my classes, but I didn't actually work out myself. And I had three to four hours of physical therapy. Just, I did infrared therapy. I did light therapy. I did chiropractor. I did pretty much anything you could do because I understood people with back pain. Like I'm like, I was in a bad mood the whole month 
like you're not happy because you're just in constant pain. I can see why people take pain pills, you know, just because you don't want to feel that pain anymore. So now when people come up to me and like, oh, my lower back hurts, I will absolutely um, I'm empathize with them and tell them corrections to do before they get to my place. And mine got fixed and all that, but I will never forget that because um, that was a good month where I was just out of it and I'm, I was out of my mind. And um, you, when you go through hard things, you just empathize with other people, right? So you can only do your best when you don't do your best. You are denying yourself the right to be you. You don't need the acceptance of others. You express your own by being alive and by loving yourself and others. It is an expression of God to just to say, hey, I love you. So with these four agreements, don't expect to listen to this and read the book and be like, oh, that's a good idea. I'm just going to stop doing that. You know, I'm going to stop talking negative about people or I'm going to be really impeccable with my word. Like I'm not going to say anything negative about myself or anything, even if the weather's bad. You know, that's all negativity if we complain about the weather. Right? And it doesn't happen overnight. I will say you can read the book, write the notes, and you will still probably do these things um, wrong, right? Negative ways. But it's being aware. And that is what yoga did to me. It just made me more aware of my emotions and um, just made me think and realize that I was in charge of the life. Like you get one life, right? So I want to live mine to the fullest. And I don't think I was doing that before at all, before yoga or before just kind of getting to know my body and my, my breath and all of that is just in sync. And if I go a few days without working out or without walking or somehow tapping into how my body feels, I'm real out of it. Like I'm super, um, I'm just not grounded and I don't feel like myself. And that is number one that yoga has taught me or even fitness classes will teach you. Um, Bottom line is happiness is a choice and so is suffering, right? Our attitude and our way of life is in our hands. I hope this pushes you to realize that you are in complete control of your life. If we keep our emotions in check, our actions will follow. And I believe that. So um, I tell people to read this book, The Four Agreements, a lot. And sometimes it doesn't sink in. And I literally have read it probably... I mean, over 10 times. I just always go back to it. Always, always, always. Because you're going to read it in, in a different time in your life, and you're going to need it, and it will come to you in different ways. Um, but the, the four principles are something that we should all be living our life by, and it just makes us be more aware of our decisions, more cautious of what's coming out of our mouth and how we're affecting people. And um, you just kind of have to create like a bubble around yourself, and no one can penetrate that bubble. Right. So you are always grounded. You are always good with yourself, always making, doing the best you can and making the right decisions. So hopefully you guys will read that um, and just let me know. Tag me if you enjoy the book. I also brought one that I'm reading now. It's called Fifty Shades of They by Ed Young. So I'll let you guys know what I think about that one. Um, I'm actually almost done with it. It's really good. It's really just life tips also. Anyway, so that is all I have. Um, let me know if uh, you guys have a story about yoga changing your life or any type of fitness changing your life. Um, you know, it could be anything and it, it might help the next person. That's all we're really trying to do. You guys have a great day and I will see you next week.